Welcome to Maki Studios. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to actually keyframe slash animate inside of Shotcut. So let's get directly into it. So with that said, you guys probably already have this, but make sure you guys, this program is open and you have your clips in the timeline and choose which clip you want to animate or whatever you need to do. And basically what we want to do is we want to click onto this clip. And what we're going to do after we do that is we're actually going to go up into this corner over here. We're going to go into the filters, press the plus button. And now we're going to add whatever effect or whatever we're wanting to animate. So for instance, I want to animate position and rotation and things like that. So I'm going to click on this one and now it's going to show you this. So now that you actually have that, you actually will see that you can have little stopwatches by this which will be able to show you if you can animate that property or whatever so for instance I won't be able to animate the size mode or horizontal fit or vertical fit but I can animate all these variables like position size the zoom I can even animate the rotation and I cannot animate the background color that kind of stuff right there also I want to explain something real quick to you basically shotcut has two different modes for keyframing and one of those is actually called simple keyframing. And this basically just allows you to have four different keyframes and it just goes from like zero to blank or whatever. So for instance, if we look at this, I'm actually gonna go down here and we're gonna look and switch this to the keyframes option. And now I'm gonna zoom out for you. But you can see right here, we have this dot actually. And this dot is the second keyframe. This um, green side is the start of that simple keyframe. And then we also have a dot over here and this one. So basically when you click onto this clip and we're like looking in the filters, for instance, like this, we're looking in the filters and we switch this preset option. So there's some presets a lot of times with these. So like, for instance, they have a slow zoom in and hold. So like right here, if we were to watch this through, you can see that it's just going to do a zoom in and hold. And you can tell by the box changing around it. But we don't want that, for instance. So I'm going to switch this and we're just going to maybe do a like um, do slide in from right. And then what that's going to do is we're just changing these two different variables. So down here, we do have our beginning keyframe and then we have this keyframe and if you look at the whole picture or you can see that it starts here and the box kind of moves in like that from the right to the left but you can also just change these pretty easily as well so as you can see it is doing that simple move in but for instance if you want to change where that starts or where that begins so for instance with this let's say we wanted it actually to start where our player head is right now then what we'd have to do is we'd have to come down here and there is this button which is the set filter start which is how you can move this green one you can just drag these for instance so let's say the filter starts here and now it's moved all of them, compressing them down. Um, you can do that like that. Or if, for instance, we want to start it here instead, we can actually go over here and press this button. It's just going to move that specific line slash the beginning of that filter, part of the simple keyframing. And then with that, you can even go forward and you can see that it stops on this dot. You can drag this one just the same. And if we look at the full screen, you can even see that this will alter the position at this point in time and then always at the end of it, you'll see it at its full finished state. So let's do this and then I'm gonna show you guys the other way which is literally when you go down here, there is another option right here with the little swirly brackets, I don't know what they're called, um, but this one and if you click that, it's gonna move this to wherever that player head is. So let's make this longer maybe and you can do that. You can even change like the end ones just by using the other option. So if we click this, it's gonna change that end option. So if we like watch through it, for instance, it's gonna only start at that green line and then it's gonna slide in and then it's gonna stop. And since we didn't animate anything else on the other one, it's not gonna show anything, but we did change that keyframe end start. I can't remember what they call it the second simple keyframe. So with that said, that is the basics of the simple keyframing, but I do wanna show you guys some other things with this. So I'm gonna go back to the filters real quick 
And let's say, for instance, we don't want to filter and we want to actually go up to just the default, which is nothing. And I want the start to be at the beginning. So start filter there. Okay, now that we actually have this, um, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about it. So when you go down here, there is these options and this will allow you to jump in between the beginning and end of the clip. So like seek forwards, seek backwards, basically. But with that, I'm going to go back up to the filters. And what now that we're on the filter, um, you can see there's these little stopwatches. So this is basically just similar to Premiere Pro. And you basically will like, let's say we want it to start here, for instance. So I'm going to start right there. I'm going to click that keyframe. And now that you can see that, it added this size and position one down here with a few different options. And now we have a keyframe down there. So position zero, zero with the size zero, zero. Okay. Let's say we want to move it over to the right, for instance. So we can just do this. We can even just press this to alter it, or we could just type it in. So let's do 100 pixels over. And then if we go like maybe two more seconds, we can bring this back to zero real quick. And now that we have that, you can watch it through and it's literally gonna go wee and whoop real quick. If you wanna be able to jump in between these keyframes, alter their positions, all you have to do is come down here and you have this seek forward, seek back, and this will go to the previous or next keyframe depending on which one you're on. So like this one goes forward and then this one goes back. You also have an option if you wanted to, to like, add your own keyframe from down here just by pressing this. So add keyframe at player head. And for instance, if you wanted to just change the position and things like that, you could press this button and then go into full screen and you can even just move it real quick. And it's gonna, let me see here, I forgot, I have to do that. Move it real quick. And now that we have that, it's been added as its own keyframe. And if we started to watch it, you're gonna see it goes full, goes to the left, back, and then does this. So for instance, you could do some really simple animations like that. Um, you also have an option to delete it. So let's say we didn't want this one, make sure it's selected with that red color. So we have it selected and then press this delete button right there. If you also wanna zoom in and things like that, you obviously do have your zoom right here. So you can zoom in, see all the keyframes, zoom out, things like that. Um, let's say now that you don't want it to just be a linear animation wherever it just goes from this position to this position, but you want easing or anything else like that. What you can do is actually come over one of the keyframes, select it by left clicking, then right clicking on it, go keyframe type, and you can switch in between hold, linear, or smooth. And the smooth one is going to have that ease in, ease out on it. So now if we watch this, it's going to have more of that ease in and ease out versus whenever we have keyframe type linear, it's literally just going to go straight and then straight back. But yeah, you can see right there, it just goes straight, stops and goes back. But if we do do smooth like this, then it's actually gonna go and then kind of slow down, pick back up and go back. So it's, it's a slight little thing, but that is a lot of animation. You can even just remove it or cancel it. So press cancel to not do anything or just remove it. I'm gonna undo that. Oh my word, why? I hate this. Um, let me see here. I'm gonna redo it, sorry. So that's something else to keep in mind. So undo, redo, really don't do those if you're keyframing. I'm upset now. <laughs> oh my word. Hmm, cool. I'll just have to redo that real quick. Now that you guys actually have the animation done, let's say for instance, you actually wanna save this as a preset, just like you actually have um, with the simple keyframes and everything else. You can save those and you can select just from the list. You can add your own. You can see that there's like default and all of those in the preset option, but you can even add or remove your own that you've animated. So let's say for instance, we really liked this animation, which I did it again. Oh my word. Uh, I hit that. Okay. But now that you actually have this animation, for instance, we can actually save this as our own preset, kind of like we actually do with the ones before. And you can click in and select one of these. 
all you have to do is actually press this plus button and it'll pop up this little save preset so let's call this for instance um, 100 100 pixel and then we'll do right and then if you press OK on that should actually make that an option for your automatic so for instance if we were to just select it if you go to the top and you click on this it'll add all of these positions so let's say for instance let's actually disable this yes and instead we wanted this hundred pixel or whatever right we can click on that and it'll just add all those keyframes and we don't have to reanimate that over and over again which is perfect if you're making a lot of similar videos or anything like that and it is actually pretty helpful but the last thing is with that if you accidentally do it like let's say we actually don't want this slide to the right and then back for instance we can actually go back and make sure that is selected press the minus button it'll say are you sure you want to delete and it'll say its name for you right there and I'm gonna press OK on that and now if you've done that it should literally just delete that from the list so if we go into the filters presets and it should be not there anymore at the top so that's the basics of actually being able to animate inside of shotcut so with that said guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video i do have a playlist over here with all my other shotcut videos we also have a video over here that youtube recommends for you and with that said guys remember keep on editing